Hi, this is Bethany with Shabby Fabrics, and I've got a quick tutorial for you today. Um, sometimes here at Shabby, I help the social media team by answering some technical questions that we see pop up on YouTube and Facebook. And one of the most frequent questions we get is how to bind a hexagon or a quilt project that has 120 degree corners, like you see in the 60 degree table topper behind me. Um, this is a project that we kit and make available to you quite frequently. Uh, this one actually just released on our website in the Holiday Essentials Love Collection. And um, we are getting some questions on how to bind this, so we wanted to walk you guys through that. So like with uh, most of our binding projects, we are going to start with uh, two and a half inch strips. I have mine here that for this particular project of this size. I have two strips sewn together, pressed in half with wrong sides together. Um, and for this project, like you can see here, um, there's not a lot of real estate on each side for leaving long tails and then joining your ends together. Um, when I'm joining fabric strips together on my binding, I like to have at least 16 inches to eight, preferably 18 to work with. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to um, complete the binding and close this without leaving long tails on this. So first thing I do on my binding is I will, um, lay this flat after I've pressed it open, sorry, after I've pressed it in half, I'll lay it flat, bring it to my iron, and I'm going to fold over a 45 degree angle here and just press that into the fabric. Okay, nice and hot. And then with the corner clipper, or um, really any ruler, but I like the corner clipper for this for a particular reason, I will lay that right across the line that I just ironed in here, that um, printed line on the ruler will line up with the line on the uh, fabric strip. And I will cut that right off. So now I've got a perfect quarter inch ironed into this. And when I fold this over, this is what it looks like here, okay? So when I bring this to my project, um, we're gonna start sewing it's gonna feel a little weird. It's not like a traditional binding here, but what we're gonna do is I will sew with a quarter inch seam allowance on just this side of the fabric for a little bit until I get a good inch or two past this point here. So sew a couple inches down, hold this over, and then starting kind of where I left off on that first seam with both layers flat down, I will sew my quarter inch and I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric here. When we have a normal 90 degree uh, binding uh, or 90 degree quilt edge, it's really easy to gauge that quarter inch on uh, something with a, a bit of a more uh, wide angle. It's a little bit harder to gauge that, so I'd say it's better to go a little generous than, on that quarter inch than rather get your stitch too close. So I'm gonna take this to my machine. Also, again, quarter inch, about two inches past the point here. Fold this back down starting right there and go all the way to the corner. Okay, so this is probably the part where most people um, need the direction here. When it's a 90 degree angle, we know we bring that straight up, straight down, and we keep sewing. It's a little, um, feels a little weird on a 120 degree angle, uh, but we're gonna do basically the same thing. I am going to pull my fabric until it lines up flush with the edge of my quilt so that quarter inch, uh, that little stop point that I have on my thread um, is what kind of anchors my fabric. If I'm way off, I can always just kind of push that over. Again, if like that, if I stopped a little bit generous of a quarter inch, I can move that back to where I need it. But I want the very tip of this red fabric here to match the very corner of my quilt top here. And then again, I'm laying this completely flush 
in like one straight line with the edge of my quilt piece. And then I like to take something like a very sharp tweezers or maybe even a pin and fold that back, kind of keep that in place so that this lines up perfectly with the edge of my quilt, okay? So you notice this is not a 90 degree angle, it's because we're not working, or sorry, I have to 45, it's because we're not working with that 90 degree, so it, it's just a different angle to work with. Um, I will either pin or wonder clip this in place um, and take that back to the machine. And so a quarter inch down here, again, stopping at the edge. And we're gonna do this for all six corners, uh, stopping when we get to the very last one here. Um, but I'm going to take this to the machine, I'll come back and show you this one more time, and then we will um, show you how to finish this. All right, so I want to show you that one more time. It's the exact same thing. We're going to pull the binding so that it's flush with the corner here. And then using a, a finger or a pen, I like the tweezers to kind of keep this in place. Pull that back down, flush to the corner. You can see this angle that we're getting here is identical to what we have over here. And we will sew with our quarter inch all the way around. So I'm gonna do the, the next four sides here and I'll show you how to join these. All right, so I'm at my last corner. We're gonna do exactly what we've been doing before, but this is where we start joining our ending to our beginning here. So again, I lay this down, I pull that over, and you can see these will overlap beautifully. I'm gonna clip this in place so I don't lose that perfect crease there. And then um, I like to make sure, so this is basically gonna tuck inside of here. Um, I like to make sure that this fabric here um, extends beyond this cut fabric here. So I usually just kind of eyeball this and do this with scissors, um, but we can always get out a ruler. Actually, I think I am. I know I need this going in this direction. So I'm gonna lay my corner clipper in the other direction here. I'm gonna make this pretty generous just for some insurance here. Across. And now when I lay this in, I've trimmed off some of that bulk. You know, I made that a little long. I was trying to make it generous for insurance, but I made it a little too long. So I'm gonna trim off a little bit more. There we go, beautiful. So when I lay this in here, this is gonna overlap. I'll sew again from my edge until I, uh, with a quarter inch until I run into my previous stitching. And for a project this small, I don't usually close this seam up here, this open seam. Um, if, you're, if this is something that's just gonna stay on my table, I'm not, it's not you know, the edge of a binding on a quilt that's gonna be used a lot. I don't think it'll have a lot of traffic on it that'll maybe cause it to unravel, but you can always go in with a needle and thread and hand sew that together. Um, I typically don't. Okay, all my sides have been, uh, all my bindings been placed on all sides. Um, now this is the time where I take this to my iron and press these ends over. Um, and you'll notice that when you press these, that miter in the corner just kind of perfectly lays where it wants to naturally. And then I'll show you how to match that same angle on the back. Great, so once you have your binding pressed over, I, I call this popping the corners. You just pop the fabric over and that little miter likes to turn over naturally. Um, We're gonna want to lay this down flush to the edge all the way around, which sounds easier than it actually is, um, but I'm gonna walk you through that to take all the fear away from that. Um, I like to clip this down with wonder clips. 
Um, when we normally bind a 90 degree quilt, it's really easy to lay the fabric down flush to the edge here, get it really tight, and then we have this perfect 90 degree corner here. But on a 120 degree corner, we can't do the little flap here, the little fold of fabric that's underneath the next edge um, as snug as that because we'll get this weird little gaping hole here. Okay, So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I use to get these to line up really perfectly. Um, and one thing I like to do um, is use a reference point on where I'm going to fold this fabric here. On this quilt, uh, this is just a sandwich I put together to show you how to bind a hexagon. So um, I have some quilting lines in here and some of them do go edge to edge across this whole thing. Um, you can take your ruler on corner to corner and mark with maybe a friction pen where that center line is on all three angles of this. Um, or like on this uh, tabletop right here, your quilting might go right to that point. So that's a good reference point. But I like to have something to reference. I have the quilting here, but to show a little better on camera, I am going to just, with a friction pen, mark a little line there. And what I like to do, let's see, um, is I will lay this flat, and then I want, when I fold this over, I'm gonna click this here, is I want the line of this fold to line up with this line here. So I might use my tweezers again to kind of manipulate this fabric until I get that fold lined up. And really what I want is the edge of this fabric and the edge of this fabric to meet right at that point where those folds meet together. Okay. So however you need to manipulate your fabric, that's how we can do that. I'm liking that there. I'm not getting it perfect with the quilting, but I like that my fabric's lined up. Um, so I would rather have that than it lining up with the quilting. So I'm gonna do this again on a couple more sides. Again, I get to this corner. And I'm gonna try to manipulate this fabric into place. This one looks like it's pretty good lining up the when these two fabrics meet up that center fold is lining up right with the quilting so I'm very happy with that. And I'll go all the way around. And then I run in here to the uh, seam where I joined this and I don't want it to appear bulkier on the front than it does on the rest of the of the quilt project. So a lot of times I will just kind of pull that a little tighter to the back since there is a bit of bulk there. And then keep prepping this and folding it over as I would uh, the other corners here. I don't like that one. Let's see. And sometimes I've done this too, is I'll get this side folded over and then come back to the corner once this fabric's kind of stabilized and out of the way. So, use my threads. And use those tweezers to kind of guide that fabric perfect right there until those points light up. I like it. Actually, that's gonna work a lot better for me. I'm gonna keep doing it that way. I've made dozens of these table toppers, and this is the first time I've done the binding where I clipped down this side before I did the corner, and I think I'm gonna start doing it like that from now on. That's a very handy trick for me. So here it is from the front, and I take this to my machine and top stitch, stitch in the ditch around the edge, and that'll secure that back. Okay, we come back from our machine. Let me show you the back that we just sewed. Um, looks like all of these look pretty darn good to me. 
Um, I've cut all the fabric and then let's see where we joined the fabric. Here it is. This is the seam here where we joined just by tucking that fabric underneath. Again, if I'm working with something 16 to 18 inches on an edge and I've got the real estate to actually match those threads, those um, fabrics together with a seam, I will. But for something this short, it's really difficult for me. I don't like to um, struggle with the fabric that much and you know potentially warp it. So I'll do this and just kind of tuck the fabric in. And then if it is a high traffic piece, I might go in and stitch that by hand. But for this, it just might sit on my table for a couple weeks of the year. Um, I'll leave that, that open there. Um, so again, thanks for joining me on the tutorial today. Be sure to like and subscribe. We love to hear your comments. If you have any other um, like technical sewing techniques you'd like to see, let us know in the comments so we can uh, get that content to you. We love um, providing that to you. And thank you for joining me today.